Okay, Paulette here. Um, today I'm sitting here with my little assistant, Fluffy, as you can see in the chair there. Um, this video is going to feature deep sky objects, um, mostly open star clusters, um, but there are some pictures of the Orion Nebula, and um, right now the Celestron Nexstar 4SE telescope sits on an all as mount on a flat surface, and so I can't get real high exposures. Um, I'm hoping on getting an EQ wedge mount um, on the tripod soon, and once that happens, I'll be able to take longer exposures and get some neater looking, cooler looking pictures. But for now, uh, this is what I have and I'm going to show you what I've done so far since purchasing this telescope in, excuse me, November of 2022. My last video feature, featured planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, and Uranus, uh, not Uranus, Neptune. Um, so now we're switching our attention to deep sky objects. Just like at the beginning of my last video, um, I'm showing you here my new telescope, the Celestron Nexstar 4SE. I put my ZWO ASI 120 MC-S camera in the eyepiece to take photos. And I used an old-fashioned um, viewfinder um, because I like those better than the red dot viewfinders. This is a computerized motorized telescope. Um, it's in Alt-AZ um, mode right now. It sits on a flat surface table um, at night when I take my pictures and get images of deep sky objects. Um, that is uh, what this video is all about. Today um, we're going to be showing some pictures of some of the deep sky objects this telescope and camera have captured. Okay, so here we see the M42 and M43. M42 is the Great Orion Nebula. Slightly above M42 is M43. It's the bright white star up above M42 Great Orion Nebula. There is some nebulosity visual in this picture. In this picture we see more nebulosity of M42 and M43. This picture was processed in Deep Sky Stacker, Registax, and GIMP. In Deep Sky Stacker, when it was saved to my computer, it produced some black anomalies, which we will see more prominently in the next photo. To get rid of those anomalies, I put the picture in Registax played with it in the wavelets and produced a picture similar to the one you see here. I then placed that picture in a free app called GIMP to pull out and bring out the color and get that nebulosity to really shine. As you can see in this photo, I had some problems with my stars. When I processed and stacked several pictures in Deep Sky Stacker and saved the file, I ended up getting these black anomalies on the stars due to the fact that they were slightly out of focus. I'm working on getting better focus 
because believe me, Deep Sky Stacker does do an awesome job of stacking pictures. And I want this problem to improve without having to put my pictures in Registax, Wavelets, and mess around with them until the stars don't have black anymore, but are out of focus. As you can see in this picture, Deep Sky Stacker, along with GIMP, really pulls out that nice red-pink nebulosity all around those stars. Okay, so in this picture, we're going to talk about stars. And this is the most focused and clear picture I have of the Orion Nebula. In this picture, we see four stars, and they have been identified using astrometry.net and Stellarium as Theta Orionis A, C, and D. A shines at magnitude 4.84, C shines at magnitude 4.59, D is a double star, it shines at 4.75 and has a companion Gaia DR2 which shines at 6.53. Now let's look at the three stars outside of the nebula. The three stars have been identified as NGC 1976-682, also known as Theta II Orionis A, B, and C. A shines at magnitude 4.97, and is 1,545.81 light years away. B shines at magnitude 6.28 and is 1,333.49 light years away. C shines at magnitude 8.19 and is 1,346.19 light years away from the Earth. Now we're going to talk about these two stars that are located on the border between M43 and M42. M43 is much dimmer, and so the nebulosity is much more difficult to see in this picture. And in fact, most of M43 cannot be captured with this equipment. However, we can identify these two stars. The brighter one is V1230 Orionis. It's 9.44 magnitude and 1418.21 light years away. The dimmer one is identified as MR Orionis and it shines at 10.3 magnitude and is 1,362.72 light years away from the Earth. Next, we finally can move on to the star cluster Caldwell 50. This magnificent star cluster is an open star cluster located right in the heart of the Rosette Nebula.
I process this picture using sequitur and GIMP. With sequitur, I can add some dark frames and some flat frames to take out most of the noise from the original picture and bring out some of the colors of the stars. Most of the stars in this picture appear white, but you can see the nice bright yellow star in the lower right corner, and that demonstrates how sequitur and gimp can take out most of the noise and give us a nice looking picture. Here in this photo, we have the same picture of Caldwell 50. However, this was processed using Deep Sky Stacker and GIMP. Deep Sky Stacker brings out more stars, but leaves us with the black anomalies mentioned earlier in this video. After many tries, I could not get rid of these black anomalies. I used GIMP and it still remained. Therefore, we get a picture with a lot more stars than we had in the sec sequitur picture, but slightly messed up with the black anomalies. I still like the picture though. I still think it's pretty cool. Okay, so in this photo, we have identification of the stars. Number one is the star NGC 2244-122 and it shines at magnitude 6.78. Above it is a double star HD 46202A and it shines at magnitude 8.25. Its companion identified as Gaia DR2 shines at magnitude 12.5. I think it's pretty cool that my telescope was actually able to capture a 12.5 magnitude star. Right next to them is NGC 2244-178 and that shines at magnitude 8.85. It's 2,387 light years from the Earth. Okay, Paul that here. Um, thank you for watching this video. Uh, we focused on the Great Orion Nebula, M42 and 43, and I'm called Well 50. Coming up soon, we will be doing a video where we demonstrate some pictures of Messe objects M44, the Beehive Cluster, M45, the Pleiades, M46, and M47. Soon, I will have this telescope on an EQ wedge, and then we'll be able to get longer exposures, and hey, Time will tell exactly how fantastically cool those pictures will show up. But for now, all I can say is thank you for your support. Please subscribe to this channel. Give me some thumbs up and make some comments. Ask some questions. This is all being done on a low budget with low budget equipment 
And so therefore, I think it's something people can use and need, especially those that are first getting started in this hobby or are thinking about getting started. And this demonstrates what you can do with a low budget. So again, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you soon in an upcoming video. Bye-bye.